Hello, members of BAAC. Welcome to the conference. Uh, happy to see you again. I'm sorry I couldn't join you, but uh, I hope this contribution is good enough. I will show you some tools here. And my paper will explain why these two tools are very important. One is a money box and the other is a ski scraper that we use in Norway. And I will also talk about uh, some persons that have had uh, very important for the history of Norway later on. So um, have a good time, enjoy yourself, and we go on with the uh, evaluation of an old, very, very old and unknown photo. Uh, the title of my paper is a Photo Forgotten, a report of the study of an old and forgotten photo taken before the Second World War. Uh, take a look at the photo. The photo presented and published was given to me by a close friend who knew my private interest in history of the Second World War, research and study of old historical documents. My friend had reached the age where old photos had no interest anymore. My friend knew that his father had been a close friend of Max Manus, who became a national war hero after the war. Max Manus is presented on, on the photo. So far, so good. No further information was given me about the content of the photo. What about the lady and the two other boys dressed for a ski tour in winter Norway? What about the site where the ski group is resting and sunbathing? After having done a research in the field, I got the names of the boys, but the lady still unknown. The boy to the left of the photo is Einar Elef Rud. You can see him there. On the right side of the photo is Olaf Kjuvik. In the middle of the photo, the Norwegian national hero, Max Malmus. Now we will turn uh, to a close description of each of the persons, except the lady. And we start with the aim of the paper is to focus on the content of old and photo photo. If you are the person present, the story of their life, what happened to the person during the Second World War, and what about the years after the war. We begin uh, with the boys to the left of the photo, here you have it. He's a soldier in a Norwegian um, police corps in Sweden. But let me write a little bit about the story of his life. Enerud lived all his life at Haukito district, close to the city of Oslo. His, he, it was common by people who lived in Oslo to set up a summer cottage at Haukito. The parents of Olav Hjuvik were among those who wanted to spend summer holidays at Havkito before the Second War, and also later on too. Anna Rud was born June 9, 1940. He died on August 26, 2003. The main reason for presenting a report about him was his activities during the war in Norway. He took an active part in, in the work of the Norwegian resistance movement in Oslo. Max Manus, Aina Rud and Olaf Kivik were close friends. When Max Manus returned to Norway as a British agent, he needed support from friends. Not all of his friends were qualified to participate in the dangerous work fighting the German occupation of the country. And Arud did not hesitate in taking part in the resistance activities. How do we know about his work? Max Manus wrote a book, two books about his personal war experience after the end of the war. And Arud is mentioned in the books, but then Arud did not publish any reports about his, his, his wartime work. Here you see some 
uh, medals and decoration uh, about uh, his uh, time as a soldier. The ovation about uh, Einar was given me by a member of his family, whose name uh, he want, she wants to remain uh, anonymous so far. Anna Rud and Max Manus had a lot in, in common. They attended the same primary school situated at Jam, a, a district close to Oslo. Cross-country skiing and an active outdoor life were appreciated by both of the boys. They were members of Havre Sports Club. The club was set up in 1927. Both got a limited military training, and both hated the German occupation of Norway. But what happened to Einarud during the wartime and after? Due to his activities working as a driver of the, for the resistance movement, he had to run to Sweden with his family. The Germans wanted to arrest him because of his support to the Norwegian saboteurs, but he escaped. He joined the Norwegian police corps in Sweden, in 1945, he returned to Norway in uniform to take part in the liberation of the country. One of his tasks was to guide the Norwegian traitor, Fritz Quisling. Einarud refused to take part in the execution of the traitor. Like Max Manus, he had no formal education, no profession to return to, but he was a person who was a hardworking man with many private activities. Cross-country skiing was an interest of him. He participated in the famous ski contest, Birkebeineren. Playing his accordion was also part of his uh, time activities. For some years, he worked as a driver for a company in Norway, he was setting up his own company too, and tried to make a living by selling excavators to create new products, like you see here. For sale was also on his mind, making a tool for skiers. As I said, he was a very hard, very interested in, in skiing. And the ski scraper was a tool that he thought could be a very good um, uh, business uh, matter. The ski scraper, Haru, as you see here, was made to get rid of snow, which remained under the ski while skiing. You fasten the, the tool on one of the ski sticks, ready for action. Due to a lack of money, the ski scraper was not a financial success, but some ski scrapers were made. Here you see the ski scraper, and you just fasten it to the, your, your, your ski stick, and when the snow is too heavy, you just get rid of the snow. And you see here a photo that he was, he was working as a salesman, some proof, some sources of his activities. We go now to um, another, another boy, one of the other boy, Max Manus. Max Manus um, is known in Norway. I think everyone knows the man. So um, uh, let me present uh, the boy in the middle, Max Manus. Information about the man was easy to get because he has written three books about his dramatic life. A movie was even produced based about his experience fighting the Germans, German occupation in Norway. He was a soldier from 1939 to 1945, a lieutenant in Norwegian Independent Company, number one. The story of life is a training story. He made a living before the war as a selling flowers. And he was just a, a person with no education and selling flowers, trying to make a living. But he had been a sailor, a vagabond in Latin America, working both in Cuba and Chile. When the Soviet Union attacked Finland in 1939, he joined the Swedish Voluntary Corps, 
in Swedish is called Svenska Frivillkåren, fighting the Germans. The Winter War lasted from November 30, 1939 to March 13, 1940. After the war, he was a businessman with great success. Here you see a photo of him as an um, officer in the Norwegian uh, um, army. Originally, he was a British agent. Uh, after the war, uh, he was a very good success in selling machines for officers. And uh, as I said, uh, he, uh, a film was made about him and a documentary is made about him. And uh, he wrote uh, at least two books about his experience and also uh, a book about his life. Even a sculpture was made of him to honor his participation in fighting the German occupation. Uh, the sculpture was set up close to Akershus Castle in Oslo. Max Manus was born December 9, 1940, in the city of Bergen. He died September 20, 19, um, 19, uh, 1969. Here you see a photo of, of um, Max Manus, the lady, and Tom and Olav Schivik. Uh, resting after a hard ski uh, ski trip, and to the left you see Norwegian soldiers uh, taking part in the Winter War uh, in, in Finland. Here you see the uh, Norska Frivillig. Uh, uh, Norwegian joined the Swedish Volunteer Corps, but the Norwegians were not really fighting. They, they it was too late, but they. They were trained and um, uh, spent some time in uh, in in, um, in Finland. Uh, Max Manis was also famous later on because you see here on the photo is a security guard for Crown Prince Olaf in 1945. Max Manis is sitting there with um, to the right on on the photo, and the Crown Prince is uh, to the left. This is uh, 1945, and he, according to his report, Max was very nervous because uh, the car was open. And you see there to um, the right, uh, the sculpture was made of him later on and set up at the castle, uh, Arkeshu's castle. Books. We have written uh, in Norwegian, they will hate Skogot or they will hate He wrote very um, fresh, very open about his life. And uh, he had his opinion, a very clear opinion of, of, of the, the life and the, the fighting during the Second World War. So far, so far, Max Malus. What is this? This is a money box, as I showed to you. Olaf Hjewik, who was a friend of Max Malus, was interesting in uh, moving making too. And um, they had a lot in common, all these three men. They wanted to create something after the war. Max Malus wanted to sell them, wanted to be a businessman selling uh, machines for offices. Uh, Rude wanted to, to improve the skiing facilities. And Olaf Kuvik wanted to make a business out of um, a money box. Counting, counting uh, coins uh, was a time consuming business for any bank cashier and, and Olav Kivik was a bank cashier. He found out that it took too much time uh, counting all this money, so he wanted to make um, a money box. Uh, and he spent a lot of time and um, um, to make, make this one. Uh, the production was produced, but due to lack of interest from Norwegian banks, the production was closed at an early stage. 
but he was also interested in 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 uh, movie making, how to make money and how to save money. This is just a joke, of course, but that was uh, something he wanted to, to create. He was uh, loved to have uh, make uh, movies, and this is just uh, um, wanted to to make a tool made showing how money was produced just a nonsense of course no support for the film was granted by the banks no film was made Olaf Zurich was born in December 23 1930 but he died March 16 1979 they are buried close to each other at Mustang graveyard. Juvik to the left and I know uh, to the right. Before I say thank you for your attention, I would uh, add some information about the mission, about it. My mission presenting the content of an old and unknown and forgotten photo is to make you more interested in the preservation of old photos. You might find a nice and thrilling story connected to the photo. The lady on the photo is still unknown. I've contacted Max Mann's family. I don't know. He had a girlfriend before the war. But so far, we don't know her name. The research of the photo is not finished. I do not know where the photo is taken. It is winter time. What about the ski coach dudes? Take a look at the, the golf nickers used by the boys. What is the name of the girl from the Max Vanus before the Second World War? We do not know, but we know that he was a famous uh, guy. Girls liked him. The boys had one common interest, making new products. But only Max Vanus made a success as a businessman. He was a national war hero with support from the management of the Norwegian banks. The production of the new money box, the ski scrapers, were not a business success so far. As I showed you, I and I and Olaf Schiff are buried close to each other at the Nusland graveyard situated in the city of Oslo. The photo was presented. Uh, the photo was I uh, started with, and the photo on the left side was presented on Facebook to get information about the content on the photo. The result of the presentation was about 1,548 person who uh, were living in the United States had seen the photo. The photo was forwarded to about 400 of my Facebook friends. Nobody returned facts about the missing information wanted for a final report of the content of the photo. But I'm still waiting for news about the nice lady. So thank you for the attention. So, just, just.